Hi everybody, welcome to, to the live, the radio live, the interview live with Gabriel. So I am waiting uh, about uh, Gabriel. Hi Gabriel. So let's get the invitation. Yes, I have the haircut of Tokyo Hotel. Yes. <laughs> uh, haircuts are closed in Belgium, so we cannot get. So, hi, Helen. Hi, how are you? Hi, Gabrielle. I'm fine, and you? Good, thank you. What time is it over there? Uh, it's almost 8 o'clock p.m. Oh, okay. It's early here. It's 11 a.m. <laughs> yeah, and it's uh, 11 o'clock at uh, LA, in LA. Yes, yes, 11 in the morning. Yeah, that's right. So I did check a bit your biography, your work, and I really love it. So that's why I decided to chat with you today. And oh. that's great. Thank you. Thank you. <laughs> uh, so I read that your real name is Gabrielle Elise Burasa, and you yes, take you Stone. <laughs> But Stone, it's a, it's a fake name, or it's the name of your mother, or...? Yeah, so my dad's birth name was Barasa, which most people normally can't pronounce right. You did good. Um, and my when he started to become an actor, he changed his name to Stone. Um, and then when my mom and him got married, she became Stone. So when I started acting, I kind of adopted that into uh, my, my new last name. That's great. That's great. And uh, you don't speak French because Gabrielle, Elise, and and uh, Buzraza, it sounds some French. Sounds some French. Yeah, yeah. Barasa is French, um, and my dad, his his lineage is he has some French in him. But no, I don't speak it. I wish I did. It's a beautiful language. <laughs> bonjour, Gabrielle. Yeah, bonjour. I can say bonjour. <laughs> Gab Gabrielle is the name of the angel, l'ange Gabrielle. Yes. Yes. So at the beginning, you were an actress, simply an actress at the beginning. Uh, that's what you want to do in the past. That was the first plan to be an actress. So you spend the audition. Yes. Yeah. And I still I'm still acting. It's obviously a lot slower right now because of COVID. But um, I've been acting for 10 years now and it um, I, I, I do love it. I'm still passionate about it. Um, so I. I started doing, you know, film and um, a lot of independent work. And it was in 2015 that I made the jump into directing. So I started uh, with a short film that I wrote, produced, directed, and starred in called It Happened Again Last Night. Um, and that went to festivals and ended up winning a bunch of awards and um, was really kind of my first look into the fact that I really loved being behind the camera as well as in front of it. That's right. That's right. You directed three movies. There is the new one with uh, with uh, Scooty, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> uh, Scott Copton. She was in uh, Germany, uh, not far away from my home in Belgium. She was in Germany mm -hmm. and she acted in your movie. And that's Stay Safe, the name, the title name. It's called Stay Home. So we Stay Home. Sorry. Sorry. Yeah. No, it's okay. We shot that during COVID, actually, this past year and everyone did it remotely so we you know we only sh worked in the same space as a few of the actors scout was one of them um and it was actually my mom's idea she wanted to do it um she was she called me and said let's get all the horror people together and make something for the fans and so we did and we had daniel harris and scout compton kane hotter barbara crampton my mom d wallace um so all of the horror legends kind of got together to make this film so It was a big challenge to direct people when you're not in the same room as them um, to kind of come up with this creative ways that we could make the, uh, the stunts work when we had, you know, a four person crew. It was very minimal, um, not usually how I'm used to, to shooting a film, but uh, it turned out really, really awesome. And the fans really loved it. And it's up on, on YouTube on Bloody Disgusting. That's right. You get check the, the, the movie on YouTube. It's free. It's really great. And I think that's the first horror movie during the COVID, in fact. It might be. Yeah. I mean, it, COVID in L.A. has been so weird. The entire industry really shut down for a while. Um, and now everything's starting to go back, but there's so many rules in place for people's safety that it's hard for smaller films to get off the ground. Yeah, that's right. And 
did you enjoy the first time you directed did you enjoy for you it was a new experience uh, yeah. did you enjoy this yeah um i think i enjoy directing more when i'm not also in front of camera when i did it happened again last night it was it was a lot because i was not only directing and producing i had a co-director but i was doing all of that and i was in every single scene so it was a lot of pressure and work for me um the second film i directed after emma which was with amy smart and tamor gazi and d wallace um that i was just the writer director on so i really got to take a seat and do one job which was nice um and i think I, I enjoy that more as opposed to being in front and behind. It's like too much to focus on for me. <laughs> and would you like one day to direct a movie with you as an actress to direct yourself in a movie? Um, I, I, I wouldn't say no to it, um, but I would need a really good team around me because it's a lot of work when you're behind and in front. <laughs> <laughs> and uh, would you like one day to direct a full length movie? Yeah, definitely. I, I have a couple that we're discussing, so it's just a matter of which one ends up getting funded first. But I, that's definitely on the uh, on the horizon. That's great. I hope to see that. And uh, <laughs> have you created um, a movie production company or not at all? Uh, yeah, my my, co my company is called You Can Productions, and that's what we do all of our uh, all of our projects under. But um, we usually partner with other companies if we're going into a co-production um, so that we can, you know, have more support during filming. Uh, there is a question for you. Uh, do you like French movies or French actors? I, I love anything worldly. So I went to, uh, to Paris in 2017 uh, on a big Europe trip. And I definitely want to go see more of France. Um, and I, I love, I think French cinema is really, really beautiful. There's this um, longing and this uh, love that isn't captured in other, other uh, mediums. But uh, I have to admit, I don't watch as much as I probably should, because for me, reading subtitles, which I'll do, and I, and I have done, But it's really difficult for me as growing up as an actress because I want to focus on the actor and watching what's going on with their face and not be reading to understand what's going on. Um, so it's hard for me to, to separate that. Okay. And have you ever been in Belgium? Uh, I have not. Um, it's on my list. I have so much of, of the world that I still need to go see, but I have not been in Belgium yet. Okay, I hope you can come. I saw that you wrote a book that is Eat, Pray, FML? Yes. FML. What, does, what does that mean? Because there is a podcast named FML, and I, I don't know what does that mean, FML. Yeah, so the podcast is, is off of the book, which is my podcast. It's called FML Talk. But the book is called Eat, Pray, FML, and FML stands for, like, I don't know if I can curse on here, but F my life. <laughs> okay. Um, which is, it's an American slang for um, kind of being like, oh, God, all this stuff that's happening to me, like, F my life. Um, and it's obviously the title is a play, uh, a satirical play on the, the famous Eat, Pray, Love, um, kind of like a comedy spin on that. And uh, it's about my life in 2017. old for six months um i filed for divorce and left shortly after that i met a guy and we fell madly in love and he convinced me to go on a month-long trip to italy with him 48 hours before we were getting on the plane he told me he needed to go by himself and i was absolutely devastated but i had a decision to make and that was either stay at home heartbroken or go travel europe for a month by myself So I ended up doing six countries solo over the span of the month. And that's what the book's about. That's great. I, I have the mean because there was an internet bug. So one moment it, it fixed, it was fixed. So, oh, okay, uh, good. <laughs> I, but I understand everything, but it was cut 
One moment it was cut, but now it's okay. Okay. Uh, so eat, pray, FML. That's great. So it's a book. It's a podcast. It's also a company. I see that you have a company name, FM, eat, yeah. pray, and FML. So it's it's uh, it's your business. It's your your life, in fact. And, yeah. Uh, do you want to do some uh, a movie about eat, pray, FML, or something uh, more than a podcast, a video, something different yeah. about this? We've talked about it. Um, I think it sits better as a TV series because it would kind of be too much to pack into one movie. Um, so we're in the very, very early stages of talking about what that might look like. Okay, no problem. And uh, I saw that you dub a, a, a cartoon. You you were the voice of an animated cartoon. Do you remember? I don't know the name again of this thing, but uh, you don't remember? Do I don't you? know. It's quite possible. <laughs> It was something with a bunny, something with oh, a rabbit. Yes. Okay. Um, God, I can't even remember the name of it. It's the adventures of something, but I do know what you're talking about. I was the mom in the beginning of that in the live action section. So it, it's like 10 minutes of a live action uh, film and then it changes into animation. So I was in the live action part of it. I didn't voice one of the characters though. Okay, but have you ever voiced a character in your life? I have, but I would love to because when I recorded the audiobook for Eat, Pray, FML, it was like my dream job. I just woke up 15 minutes before I had to be there, threw my sweats on, and went to record in a booth for the day. Um, so I would love to do that. I think it's like my type of, a, my type of gig. <laughs> <laughs> and uh, you speak about geek. Do you like comics or video game? Um, I've never been hugely into comics or video games. I did play a, a good amount of Super Mario Nintendo when I was younger, um, but I'm I'm not. I wouldn't call myself a, a gamer or comic girl. That's great. <laughs> Super Mario, you know, that's my generation. When you play yeah. Super Nintendo, you remember the big gray card, and you yes. play the art. That's amazing. That, that's my jam. <laughs> yeah, that's right. And so, uh, what's your project uh, according your acting career? Did you film some movies during the COVID? Was it hard to be tested and everything? I did, actually. I shot a movie with Scout where we play sisters. Um, and it was a really crazy experience being back on set with COVID going on. Everybody was masked. They kept all of the actors separate from everybody. Normally I like to sit and hang out and talk with the crew and get to know everybody. And we were like kept in this one section by ourselves. Um, so we weren't like cross contaminating and uh, it was really different, but you know, we made it work and Scout and I had such a great time. Um, I think that comes out later this year and it was our first time getting to be on screen together. I've directed her in uh, a couple things now. Um, but this was our first time being able to act together, which was a lot of fun for us. And um, we got to play sisters, so it was great. <laughs> and uh, do you prefer to watch a movie uh, on screen, uh, on computer screen, like Netflix or Amazon, something like this? Or do you prefer the cinema? We are closed right now, but which uh, media you prefer? Yeah, I think I'm always partial to seeing things on the big screen. I mean, that's like where, what we make them for. Um, and there's some type of nostalgia in going to the cinema and, you know, being able to sit and enjoy it on a big screen in that way. Um, but I mean, times are changing and we're, we're adapting to that. So, you know, we've been watching numerous things on Netflix um, and Amazon at, at home as everybody has. I mean, I think the, the pandemic has really shown people how important the arts are um, because it's really been what's getting everybody through at home right now. <laughs> yeah, that's right. But you like sport because uh, in Instagram on your publication, there is many where you are doing sports and everything. It's like you like to be in health to do sports. Yeah, yeah. I, I grew up, um, I grew up playing baseball, soccer, a little bit of volleyball, um, dance was a big one, but, um, but yeah, I, I, you know, we, I, we sit down and watch football games. Um, but I'm, I'm a big workout person normally. I mean, that's fallen off a little bit in the pandemic, but, um, like kickboxing and boxing. Um, I, I love, you know, 
cool, fun, different workouts like that. I love hiking, uh, anything that gets me moving and um, feeling better. Yeah, I think it's important to be in health and to enjoy the life. I think that's the main yeah. Yeah, and I hope what, that one day you could go in Belgium. When I say Belgium, what, what's, your, what's in your mind when I say Belgium? Um, chocolate. <laughs> that's right, that's right, that's right. And Jean-Claude Van Damme is from Belgium. Yeah, yeah. Um, I, I would love to go to Belgium. There's so many places overseas that I, I still want to go. And um, I'm a huge travel person, so being in the U.S. for an entire year during this pandemic has been like a little hard for me. Um, I, I just want to jump on a plane and, and get back to seeing the world. But um, Belgium is definitely on my list. Where do you recommend that I have to go when I get to Belgium? Uh, I, I recommend you Liège. It's a city uh, in, in Belgium in the Walloon part because there is a Flemish part and the Walloon part. So there is Liège. Mm -hmm. It's, I don't know if you know, but there is Berlin in Germany, Berlin. It's, it's kind of Berlin in Belgium and, okay. the capit and the capital, of course, Brussels, with the yeah. mannequin piece. There is a little guy who is peeing and it's the kind of Eiffel Tower in uh, Belgium because we have, we have humor, you know. If you want one day to direct a movie in Belgium, you could do it because yeah. there is something very humoristic, you know. You know, in England, we speak about humor, you know, with the Beatles, Mr. Bean, the Monty Python, they, they have the English humor. It's the same with the France and the Belgium. We have a, a special humor, very typical, very funny, and it's a bit surrealistic, you know, because we have Magritte, we have big painters, and they create the movement surrealistic. So we are a surrealistic country. Yeah, it's a bit uh, funny and... You, you like humor. You like uh, I'm sure. comedy show, comedy shows. I've heard, I've heard really beautiful, amazing things about Belgium. A lot of people have recommended it to me. And uh, have, you ever, um, have you ever do, have you ever did um, a, a show, you know, a one woman show, a comedy, comedy stage? Yeah. As you I was. have not. I'm, I don't think I'm funny in a, in a, uh, in a comic way like I, I have such respect for people that can get on stage and do a whole set and um really you know command a whole presence by themselves even when I have to record my solo podcasts when I don't have a guest on um it's it's a it's a talent to talk by yourself for that long my poor producer there's so many times where i'm like oh sorry let me start again um so i i've never considered it um i think i'm i'm more comfortable doing behind the scenes uh behind the camera directing um and creating something you know on a set like environment not not so much stage i've done i've done stage i've done theater um, but with an ensemble cast, never just by myself. That, that I think, takes a lot of balls. I don't know if I'm ready for that. <laughs> and do you like also stage or musical shows like Broadway and everything, you know, because oh. it's different. It's like uh, we know the stars from Hollywood in movies, but we don't really know stars from Broadway, from on stage uh, thing in Belgium. Of course, we don't have yeah. them in, in our country. So right. It. Yeah, we, I was in New York um, in 2018 um, for my birthday, and my mom and I went to a bunch of, of Broadway shows, and I have such respect for people that can do those. It's such a physically demanding thing to, to sing and to put your body through that multiple times a week, sometimes multiple times a day, um, and it's, it's such an experience to get to go and sit and see a live show like that. The energy is different. It's a totally different experience than sitting down to watch a film. And uh, I hope that, you know, once COVID is a little more under control, that that industry gets, gets brought back up like it deserves. And uh, have you ever seen for a movie or on stage? I have not. I, well, that's not true. In, in middle school, when I was doing um, some musicals with my theater 
group I was I did but I'm not comfortable singing I don't think that I'm a great singer I can like hold a tune but I wouldn't consider myself a singer <laughs> so you didn't release any 45 LP 33 LP or singles yeah. or CDs maybe no. why not uh, never say never <laughs> never say never yeah Justin Bieber song <laughs> And um, do you like to paint or to draw? Uh, I don't. I'm a big writer, obviously, with the book. Um, so I love to write, but I've never been, um, well, I don't think I've ever been uh, talented as far as drawing and stuff. However, my, my boyfriend is an incredible artist and does um, wood burnings like Lichtenberg um into burns into wood and he also does what they call dirty pours on on big canvases um and has an entire website dedicated to his art um if you guys want to check it out it's take Aussie art on instagram and um so i i'm around it a lot i i love to watch him work and we have a lot of his work up in our home um one of the pieces that he made me is like my favorite gift i've ever received um but I personally am not big in painting drawing world. <laughs> and uh, you, you say that you are a big fan of writing. You wrote a book. Uh, do you plan to write another book or a story who is not filmed, but only on, on paper, you know, a novel? Yeah. yeah, so I'm currently writing the sequel to Eat, Pray, FML. Um, so I'm working on that right now and have been for for a little while. Um, it's taking me a lot longer to write this one than it did the first one um, because it spans over more, a longer period of time. Um, but yes, I am writing the sequel to that, um, which will eventually be out as the book number two. <laughs> And have you ever write uh, some short stories when you were young? I did, actually. Um, I, I loved my creative writing class um, that I took, I think, my junior year, 11th grade. Um, I loved that class, and we did a lot of short stories in there. And um, I had a poem that was published um, during high school as well. Um, I have it somewhere um, tucked away in storage. Uh, but that was kind of my first intro into, uh, into being a writer, Um, although I never considered myself a writer even until I wrote this book. Um, and then I wrote, I co-wrote my first film that I shot. It happened again last night. And I wrote, uh, the second film that I did after Emma. So I've, I've dabbled in it before, but it wasn't until the book that I really had to be like, okay, I consider myself a writer now. <laughs> yeah. You spoke about after Emma, there will be a following of the movie. Um, so after Emma, we just finished our festival run. Um, so we should be able to get it online soon because I know a lot of people have been wanting to see that. Um, so eventually we're going to put it um, on some type of outlet so that people can see it. And do you want one day in the future uh, to make a crossover of your characters, you know, to mix a character of a movie with a character okay. of the book? I don't know. That's interesting. Probably not of the films that I've done because they're, they're short their short versions. So I think they kind of stand alone in their own worlds. Um, although I, you know, both of them are heavy dramas, so they could definitely exist in the same world for sure. Um, but I think, you know, moving forward, if I wanted to develop characters, it, they would be more the based from the book or writing an entirely different separate feature. And uh, do you like horror movie? Because uh, in your filmography and your movies, it's all the time horror story. But do you like one day to do a romantic movie or a comedy? Something very different in a, in a way, kind of different. Yeah, I've done a lot of horror, I think, because I'm my mother's daughter. Um, and I, I guess I have a good scream and I, I cry really well. But um, but I've done I've done a couple comedies that have been probably the most fun I've ever had on a film set. Um, I did a film called The Competition with Chris Klein and Thora Birch that um, was wildly fun for me to do. Um, and I did a movie called Swell that's um, available online at all the, the digital platforms. And that was a drama, but my character specifically was a lot of the comedic relief, which was a lot of fun for me to do. Um, so I've done things outside of horror. Um, I've done a lot of drama, but I would love to do more comedy. 
never gotten to do a romantic that would be a lot of fun for me okay i can wait because i love comedy <laughs> it's it's funny uh, or you could do a, a horror movie comedy oh, right, right horror, horror and comedy hard it's hard but it's been when it's done right it's great yeah they, they did they did one in uh, in the usa with uh, a zombie i don't know the name you know a zombie who is in love with a girl but i i didn't forget yes. the name and the french title are not the same as the american title so we we miss something they translate into english but another english title in france and another english title in the us so it's a bit strange you know yeah i bet <laughs> yeah for example they released a movie i don't remember but it was ben camp you know american pie presents ben camp uh, and they say no limit in fr in france it's no limit and in the us it's ben camp so it's oh, not the same interesting i wonder why yeah that's 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 very weird you know in 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 belgium and in france there is many people who say it's very bad translated very bad translated yeah. very bad translated <laughs> And uh, there is people in Belgium and France who hate to see the the dubbed version, you know, because there is French actor who dub you. I don't right. know the the people who dub you because there is people who dub Gabriel Stone in in, uh, in France. You know, oh, really? they, they, they try that tr now in France they try to to put an actor and the actor will dub each uh, each actor in the movie. So in Gabriel Stone there is your original the official voice in france but i don't know the name of the actress uh, so when you appear in a movie she will dub you in france oh my god that's so fun <laughs> yeah that's right and so there is bruce willis uh, he has his official voice in france no unfortunately the the french voice of bruce willis died uh, a few mm. months ago so they need to find a new one but uh, eddie murphy yeah he has the original voice of Eddie Murphy and so yeah. each famous actor and each actor has the official voice and sometimes in convention or comic con the actor meet his french voice oh that's so fun yeah that's, that's funny awesome. but but i will search who is your french voice and i will send you the information so you will see the instagram of the guy of the person that's who is the great video. that's great i would love that <laughs> And you never dub a, 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 a French actor or a foreigner, no. no? No, I have a couple friends that that dub that dub films, but I've never gotten into that. I, that's not something that I've I've done. Okay, okay. And uh, do you like to cook or not? I wouldn't say like. I mean, I do cook. Um, my my boyfriend's a much better cook than I am, um, and I'm. Normally, at the end of the day, I've been so busy that I'm too tired to do it. Um, I'm a big, a big Postmates person. Like, I like to order. Um, but uh, but we do cook a, at home a lot. Um, I used to cook more than I do now, uh, which you'd think it would be the opposite because we're at home all the time. But um, he's a really great cook, so I'd always rather eat his food. But, yes, I, I will cook if if it comes to that. <laughs> I saw that you do podcasts. They will do. They will have a podcast in a few hours. I saw on your Instagram that you will do something, a, a new podcast. Yeah. And uh, I I saw that on EMDB too that you wrote wrote something about a podcast. You you were in the writing credits of a podcast, but I don't remember the information because I am very bad at uh, <laughs> at, at titles and I never do interview with uh, papers. Because I love natural things, so. Yeah. But I see that I see that you wrote a script or something for a, a radio podcast. Maybe I've done so many podcasts um, since the book has come out, like hundreds, um, and now I have my own. But I don't know which of them do credits on IMDb. So that must have been like a podcast radio show that uh, yeah. credits people on on IMDb because that's not the norm for for podcasts. Uh, they said in the in the description that was for book reading something like this oh it might be for my audiobook yeah i think it was that yeah because, that would... because audiobook is a kind of podcast in a way right right yeah oh i didn't know that was on imdb that's fun <laughs> that's great so uh, do you want to ask me a question there, there is five minutes before you need to go because uh, you need to go in five minutes you said me yeah, i am available for 30 minutes <laughs> so I, i i take my promise i check the hour to be Thank late. You. and uh, 
thank you so much because uh, it's very complicated to interview uh, American actors in Belgium because there is many, many famous actors who, are, who have not the time to do it and you take the time to do it. So thank you so much for oh, this. Um, I'm, I'm happy to. What's your favorite place that you've traveled to? Oh, my favorite place. Uh, I, like, I like Avignon. It's a, a theater festival in the south of France. Okay. Uh, and uh, there is like a two, 2,000 plays by day. So you have comedy, you have horror, you have oh, uh, Shakespeare, Molière, and everything. And uh, I really love Avignon. It's uh, one month in July. And uh, I really love this, yeah. It's not really a place. It's an event for one yeah. month only theater in France. And I really love this, yeah. I really love um, thing. Is it out? Is the theater outdoors or indoors? Are there multiple stages? Yes, there is a lot of stages. There is a lot of theaters. I think there is uh, like 200 theaters. Oh, and wow. And there is like uh, 10 plays by days in each theater, yeah. So there wow. is many, many things. And there is a national theater, you know, with very intellectual uh, plays. And there is also funny uh, plays like one, one Man Show, Comedy Club, you know. Because yeah. in, in France, we say One Man Show. And in the U.S., it's comedy show, you know. Stand yeah. up, stand up, yeah. yeah. You love the, the term stand up. But in France, we say One Man Show, in fact. But it's different, but it's the same. I don't know if you know, do you know Gad Elmaleh? It's a French stand-up or he's be no. begin famous in the US, no? No, but I, I will put that, that place on my list because that sounds amazing. Yeah, it's in July and uh, there is Avignon, there is a beautiful thing in Provence, you know Provence? No. <laughs> no, it's the south and Joe Jonas getting married with uh, Sophie, <laughs> okay. I forgot the name, the family name. But Sophie and Joe Jonas were married in Avignon. And yeah. there is Kara Knightley is living uh, also in, the, in Provence, uh, in, uh, in there. So they're in, um, I forgot the name, Radley Scott. Yeah, Radley Scott lived also yeah. in, uh, in there. Okay. So there are many American actors uh, there. Yeah. Cool. And well, there is also, yeah. And there is also another actor, but I forgot his name. Uh, I has my man, very, very famous. Tom Hardy, yeah, Tom Hardy has a house in the, in the Provence, yeah, that's right. I tried yeah. to meet them, but they never replied, but uh, yeah. I tried. That's... One day, maybe, one day, maybe. He's one of my boyfriend's favorites, too. <laughs> yeah, I tried to interview uh, um, Scott, Scotty, Scott Compton. Yeah. Scout. I don't know if is it possible, but uh, she, I'm not sure she's famous in Belgium, but they make so many things. I really yeah. love her when she played with Devon uh, Love at First Sight Cup. Yeah, I think she mm -hmm. made this movie with Devon uh, Kaiser, And yeah, I love her in comedy or in horror movie. Yeah, the, the twice are really great. Yeah, she's wonderful. She's a great actress. Yeah, Gad Elmaleh, stand-up Frenchie, who do English stand-up on US. Yeah, that's right, that's right. And he acted in Tintin. There was a Tintin movie of Steven Spielberg and he acted... Uh, Ben Salad, it's uh, it's an Arabic uh, an Arabic man in the in the movie, and yeah, Steven Spielberg uh, hired him in the U.S. for Tintin. Oh. Hi, Valerie that's... Sweden. <laughs> yeah, yeah, that's right. So it's time for you because it's half past eight. I am looking the clock to be just honest, not to. Thank you so much for having me. This has been wonderful. I appreciate uh, you bringing me to Belgium. <laughs> yeah, that's right. That's right. It's magical. The magical mystery podcast on Instagram <laughs> of Romain Chilken. But yeah, yeah. Thank you so much, Gabriel. And uh, bonsoir, du coup. Un thank petit you peu so de français. <laughs> <laughs> thank you. Thank you so much. And uh, this is the replay. I will download the replay and uh, everybody could watch this. Thank you. Bye.